This is a routine cataract surgery in which the IOL chosen was the Alcon Vivid lens. This IOL is on the standard Acrosoft platform, so it's a single piece acrylic lens. But it has a central zone modification that acts elongating the depth of focus, providing a better intermediate vision for the patient. In other words, it's a need off lens, which stands for extended depth of focus. The Alcon Vivid lens does it by changing the wavefront of the light entering its central area. So here we're performing a routine FACO under topical anesthesia. Some tripe and blue dye is used to stain the capsule as it is a somewhat dense cataract and we all know how important it is to make a nice capsular axis in such cases. This will ensure good centration and stability for the IOL in the long run. So here we're taking our time to do a perfect and round rexis using a utrata forceps with some marks on its shafts to guide us in the desired size of rexis. So there it is, just about a perfect diameter. Some hydrodissection is done to free up the nucleus and then it is rotated with the chopper. The nucleus does a spin, the central corneal endothelium is recoated with some dispersive viscoelastic and now comes the phaco probe. We like to use this long and blunt chopper to perform our standard horizontal chop maneuvers, because it provides us with a good hold of the nucleus equator and thus ensures an efficient fracture. So after dividing the nucleus in some pieces, the fragments are held with high vacuum and then are easily emulsified in the iris plane. For conquering the cataract pieces, we like to mostly use the torsional ultrasonic setting. This way, less ultrasonic energy is employed and we avoid corneal edema, giving the patient a clear vision already in the first post-op days. When just a few pieces are left, the chopper is kept in that safe position to prevent the capsule from coming forward to the phaco tip as the vacuum builds up. So slowly but surely, all the pieces are taken down and now comes the IA probe. There is still a thick epinucleus gel and it is carefully dealt with. Another smart move here is to use the Entrapped Transformer IA handpiece, which easily turns into a bimanual IA, giving us a better and safer access to the subincisional cortex. Some polish is done underneath the rexis margin as well as some irrigation of the central posterior capsule to release those tiny little fibers that are stuck in that central area. The bag is inflated with some OVD and now it's time to load and implant the lens. Note how nicely and smoothly it unfolds in the capsular bag. The chopper is used to properly position the trailing haptic and center up this lens. The viscoelastic is then carefully removed from behind the IOL. This is an important step to avoid lens rotation, especially when it's a toric IOL such as this one. As opposed to the panoptics lens, the Vivity IOL does not have diffractive rings, so it does not cause nighttime halos. Instead, it has a central shaping beam element that modifies the wavefront of the light, providing some gain to the intermediate visual acuity. The better intermediate vision, however, comes at the expense of some contrast loss. Nevertheless, it's quite an interesting type of lens to have in our portfolio, and it can certainly be advantageous when indicated for the right patient.